are being inducted. Um, these seniors have been involved, most of them, in the Honor Society for the past three years. Um, they conducted community service hours in the visual arts, helped out with things around the school, outside of the school, in the community, also at the middle school. Um, so they've been very involved in promoting the visual arts uh, throughout Portsmouth. Um, I would first like to congratulate all of them, but I would also like to now turn over the program to our officers. Um, I'll be back a little later, but um, I would like to turn over uh, the next spot to our co-treasurer, Aaliyah Dickinson, and um, she is going to lead you into the next part of our ceremony. Good, good, good. Hi, uh, I'm Michael, there's Leah. We are both artists. We are from the world of public art. And we were asked to talk to you today because we are career artist folk. Uh, you are in this room because you make the arts. Uh, how many of you are going to continue to study or go to school and take classes or just like pursue art as a career? I need some hands. Just like, hi, be proud, for God's sakes. Yeah. Okay, good, good. We are going to share with you some of the work that we've made, and uh, at any time, if you have an actual <laughs> question, just be like, I need to know more. Throw my hand up, and we will point to you. I'm gonna introduce you to some of our work, give you a brief history, and then I want to just sort of uh, give you some words of encouragement, and then we'll call it quits. What you're seeing here is tape art. Every image here is done with tape, and we are drawing outside on buildings. All of these works are collaborative pieces. That means they're done by groups of two to six people. We will stand outside and draw on walls for 12 to 16 hours a day. When we finish a tape art piece, we traditionally leave it up for 24 hours and then we tear it down. All of these works are designed to be temporary. I started doing tape art when I was 18 years old. I had obviously just graduated from high school. I did go to the Rhode Island School of Design, and on the very first night I was there, I fell in with a group of friends who uh, collectively expressed an interest in causing light chaos, but not getting in trouble for it. And we found a medium uh, immediately, which was the tapes. And what the tape allowed us to do was to transform physical spaces, and every 24 hours we would remove the work that we made. And we did this before the sun rose, every night for months on end. And we fell in love with it as a medium. There's us expressing some skill, there's expressing some vision, but we didn't have a mission yet. And, and that's something I wanted to say to all y'all. You're in this room because you got the skill and the vision. But mission, that is forthcoming. This is one of the reasons to go on and study art because you will start to figure out your value in your art. Value meaning like, the actual value of it from a social level, from a, a historical level, but also the value of it from a financial level. And we'll, we'll talk briefly about both of those uh, coming up here. We discovered a couple years after making murals after murals after murals that we could teach tape art, that it wasn't unique to us that this medium could be used to have a voice 
And once we discovered that others could tape also, we're like, oh boy, that feels purposeful. And so half of our life is, is bringing tape art to communities and in introducing it as a way to get other people to work together, bringing high school students to Alzheimer's units, bringing middle school students to work with adults with special needs. We work in psychiatric units every single week. So our, our love of this medium and its ability to, to bring expression to people has been a driving force in our life. Um, the idea of its, its value is, is one that's a little bit uh, intriguing because we're career artists. We've been, I've been at it for over 30 years. We've been collaborating for close to 15 years in there. And of all those big, big murals that you just saw, we've done over 500 of those. Of those, we've been paid for maybe 100. It's, it's an absurdly low amount compared to the overall body of work. And this is uh, gonna be your challenge as you progress forward in your artwork, is your art is good. Continue to make your work. The value in making the work is the fact that it is the art and get good at it. But have the main driver forever be that you just need to make it. You will find ways in your life to engage with others and impress upon others that perhaps you should be paid for your work. And th that value is gonna shift over time. You'll be paid very, very little, and occasionally you'll be get jackpot. You'll be paid a lot. There is gonna be no common sense, no rhyme or reason to the amount of money that you're gonna make in the arts. You can make a career out of it, no question about it. But don't let the money that comes in be the way that you value the work for yourself, because it's not a reflection of the quality of your work necessarily. And also, AI is not gonna replace you. <laughs> just, wanna, just wanna say that aloud. A, AI has no life experiences. When, when it, it's, it is, it's not human, it is, it's a tool. Uh, and it cannot replace you and your feelings and translating those into artwork. Uh, if, if you want a comparison for that, uh, when the camera came around in the late 1800s, there was a battle cry that the cameras would replace the artists. What, what, what use will the artists have if we have this tool that can capture everyday life? And all it did is make the artists better. It became a tool for them and it forced, especially the painters, to sort of figure out new ways to sort of interpret life. Uh, and I'm hoping AI will do the same for us and just make art in the world even better. Um, that's it, that's my thing. I would love, if you have any questions about art, or art careers, or any advice questions you want, I am all yours. Ha <laughs> um, What do you think about some of the questions? No questions at all, yes. Yeah. Good, and this is a nitty gritty question. It's like, like when it becomes sustainable. I, I graduated from, from art college and uh, it became sustainable in my early 20s because I was able to find that I could do big murals and teaching. The first mural I got paid for was when I was 20, 23 or 24. Uh, I lived a very humble and simple life. And this is the thing, at the beginning of your career, you will be forced to live humbly. Uh, and we discovered that if we just kept asking and be open to yeses, we would be able to make a living out of it. Uh, so I've been very fortunate that I have, this has been my, my only job uh, since I graduated from college. in my eyes as long as I do this to you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So in the path of making the reason I've been uh, hooked on this medium with all of my collaborators for years is it's given us the opportunity to do all the things that we want to do, which is to make art with our peers, to make art that benefits society and to travel. 
Uh, Lee and I, just in the last couple of years, have flown out to Tokyo and done work with uh, families that were affected by the, 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 the tsunami that, that destroyed Fukushima. Uh, we've been in, in Greece and Athens and Hong Kong uh, and Germany. We've, and, and within the United States, we've had the great privilege of being to 42 states, making murals all about. Uh, we've spent a lot of the last couple of years down south in Texas doing a lot of work uh, in communities that are, are definitively conservative and found that the arts were something that we could collectively agree on uh, because people really respect sort of if they can, if they can visualize it, the hard work that goes into this. So even though artists sometimes get a, a bad rap for being maybe sort of, uh, uh, sort of li light of flight or, or, or lazy or superficial or like there's a lot of negative words can be attributed to artists, but when you see them work, you're like, oh boy, that person has incredible work ethic. And uh, that's something that is sort of universally respected. So with an image like this, anybody who sees this would be immediately be attracted to measuring in their mind the amount of time it would take to do all of those individual pieces. Uh, there, there's, there's no doubt that craftsmanship impresses people. And for us, being in the public and being able to engage with people has been one of the major drivers. If you can find a way with your art to feel that it is serving a greater purpose, I would say to you, pursue that feeling. Pursue finding paths for your art to not just necessarily be objects of commodity. They can always serve something beyond the boundaries of the work that you're making. Uh, for us, that means that we have found a home in hospitals. We do a lot of work directly with patients and their families. Uh, examples of that look like this. It's a great bedside activity for giving patients an opportunity to have control over their environment by asking them the simple question, what do you want to see in this room? And we are there to give them control. They can, they can uh, dictate the, the, the images that they're going to have. With these particular works, we do not put a 24-hour timeline on it. These works are designed to stay with the patient until they uh, leave that environment. Uh, and all of these works you're seeing here from the Hasbro Children's Hospital, and they had us working with patients who are the, the hardest cases for many years, mostly, mostly children and mostly children with cancer. And then beyond these spaces, we found that uh, community centers and correctional facilities and working with the incarcerated have been really good fits uh, for this medium. For the same reason, the art can provide freedom, not just for us, but for anybody who we introduce this medium to. Yes. I'll take like one more question and I'll let you guys get on with your show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right, so, uh, a good question. Like, are there any emotions involved with removing the work? Uh, joy, pure joy, absolutely. We find that the removal of the work puts a emphasis on the most important part of the, of the art for us, which is the making of the art. The capital A art experience for us is when we have the thing being made, the artist, and a viewer. That, that special triangle is the, the moment that we pursue. As soon as we finish making the art, we disappear and you're just left with viewer and tape. And for us, eh, not that special. Uh, when we remove the work, that is a public invitation. So we have a date, we have a time, and we tell the public, hey, you can come take this work down. And people at Woman's Street? Yeah, there's one mural in particular that, that had a great reception for its removal. This one. This is us outside of a museum for 20 days in a row. 12 to 14 hours a day, and we had a date. We're like, June 14th, this mural's coming down. On the day 
we were going to remove it, it rained. And 500 people showed up to remove this work. And they have to deal with that interesting emotion. They're like, I love this piece, I love it so much. I could never destroy it. And they're at a museum. They're at a place that is, uh, uh, in a nice way, a crypt for art, where you're not allowed to touch the art. You're not allowed to get even near it in some cases. And in this case, they got to physically touch it and dismantle it. And it's a wonderful group activity. Everything from here down was gone in seven minutes, eight minutes. Uh, it's a, a, an absolute feeding frenzy. And then for the rest of it, we had a, a boom lift and we gave out tickets and people stood in a line and we just took them up two at a time in a boom lift and they would just remove work and throw it down to the children below. Wonderful. So I'm showing all those details to say that it was like, it's pure, when I say joy, like it's really joyful. The longer the work takes to make, the more interested we are in its removal. And it just reminds the general public that the visual arts aren't just there to be signed and sold. Uh, and any gallery that's ever come to us to try to collect our work, we've just told them no. That's us having a mission. Does that keep us poor? Yes, it does. <laughs> but that's a decision that we've made and we've been really steadfast about that our entire careers. So um, with your own work, like I said, just for goodness sakes, like stick to your guns. Like if you, if you really feel like you have something you think is super, super important about the quality of your work that you need to preserve, no matter what, like preserve it. It's, it's really, really critical. Uh, I, I can say with no sense of irony that every, I've made art for 30 years and the best pieces I've made, all of them are ones I was not paid for. And it's painful for me to say that, but it's very true. Given no guidelines, no boundaries, no need to um, uh, present my work to others for approval, basically completely off my leash, I've been able to make my most powerful pieces. Uh, and that's something that Leah and I struggle with on a regular basis is what is gonna be the path to making this work uh, come to life and should we not to do it just because we're not being paid? And I realize it's gonna fly in the face of the reality of of rents and food and all that, but hold on to the ethos. Like, do your best to continue to make regardless of your circumstances, and your body of work will increase, it will get better, and money will come your way eventually. That's it, that's 15, there we go. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> Presidents of NAHS. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'm not one for public speaking. I actually actively avoid it most of the time. So when I was told I had to make a speech, I wasn't so sure how it would turn out. Um, but here we go. Um, when I was younger, my older sister Mary was always the artist in our family. She is an exceptional artist, and I have always admired her because of it. However, I never felt I. Um, would have a similar love for it because I wasn't as good as her. Um, over time, watching her only made me want to get better. Sibling rivalry, I guess. Um, my little brother, who is coming up to the high school next year, is also very well versed in art, and I'm very excited for him to witness the amazing experience um, of being involved in the art suite. Um, Miss Hook and Miss Franley were such welcoming people and throughout the years I have always been pushed and motivated and inspired by our amazing art teachers and by all the amazing people who participated in this community. If you are a freshman who, are, who is being inducted today or a junior who will be the leadership next year, I hope you all continue to have an excellent experience being a part of NAHS and the Art Suite. I have been so fortunate that I was given an opportunity to learn and grow surrounded by such great people. I'm certain that you will create incredible things throughout your years here. Thank you for everything you've done for me throughout my time here. I've become a better person because of it. Good luck and thank you. Uh, Please get closer to the mic. Sorry. Uh, I'm deeply honored to share the profound impact that art has had on my academic journey uh, here at Fort 
enforcement. It's been more than just a subject for me. Uh, it's been a sanctuary, a place where I can freely express myself without uh, inhibition. Uh, the art rooms have been my haven where I found solace and inspiration in all 11 classes that I've taken in the last four years. Um, within those walls, I felt a sense of belonging and acceptance unlike anywhere else in the building. It's where I've discovered my true voice and cultivated my creative creativity along with developing my closest friendships. I owe a debt of gratitude to our dedicated art teachers who have nurtured and guided me along this journey. Their passion and dedication um, expertise have created a nurturing environment where I flourish as an artist and as a person. Their commitment to excel excellence and their willingness to go ahead, above and beyond have provided me with countless opportunities for growth and exploration. I'm profoundly grateful for the invaluable role that the Art Pathway and our exceptional teachers have played in shaping my academic path. They've not only enriched my life, but also instilled in me a lifelong love for creativity and self-expression. And I love uh, the ability that I have gained from this. Um, I really hope to continue it beyond PHS. Thank you for allowing me to share this part of my journey with you. Congratulate all of our um, inductees and nominees for being here today and agreeing to spread the arts in our community. It meant a great deal to me when I was inducted into the society and I hope to share this honor with all of you. As we expand into a new generation of artists, we are not only accepting more creators into our community, but we are also welcoming thinkers and problem solvers and in innovators. I'm so thankful that I can help lead you into this journey and hope that you will all use your talents to better the world around you. Congratulations on this achievement. Now I'd like to lead our nominees in the society charge. If all of our junior, sophomore, and freshman nominee nominees could stand, please. Take up the world, its colors and forms, its lines and textures, its balances and movements and spaces. Combine all of those into a beautiful statement of what, is, what it is to be human. Give back to the world the same elements of beauty that you as an artist take from it. Create beauty in the world with your talents and your living. You may be seated. Senior inductees, please rise and repeat after me. I will in my life, to the best of my ability, through my talents in art, help to create a more beautiful world for myself, for humankind, and for all living things.
Um, at this uh, time, I would like to um, present the certificates to our senior inductees. I'll try not to cry, just, just forewarning you. Um, it's been my pleasure to work with your children. Okay, I'm just up there. <laughs> In no particular order, because I forgot to advertise them. Um, when I call your name, if you could come up, I'll hand you your certificate. If we can hang out up here so Ms. Hook can get a photo, photo op for us, um, that would be amazing. Um, our first uh, inductee is uh, one of our co-presidents, Ann Tyre Whittick. Um, just a little information I did mention at the beginning that all of these seniors have um, completed community service hours. They were required to do a minimum of 20 hours um, in the visual arts. Um, most of them did a lot more than that. We also, um, they also did hours in their junior year as well and most of them also their sophomore year. Um, so they've put a lot of effort in to becoming um, artists within our community and out in the greater parts of the community. Our next senior inductee is Sydney Renfret. As the slides have been going through, I'm sure you've seen um, where are the work of our seniors um, also where they're going to school and what they're planning on studying. Our next senior inductee is Rory O'Connell. <laughs> Most of these students, by the way, um, as Rin mentioned, have taken many um, art classes with us. Um, some of them are in our CTE pathway. Others are not, but uh, they've also taken multiple classes, AP studio classes, as well as advanced level classes. Um, our next inductee is Sophie Dooley. Our next induct inductee is Teresa Catton.
when you go to school, where you, what art you're making, and I'm sure we will keep in touch. Um, but I'd like to congratulate all of you um, and thank you for all of your efforts and all the time that you've put in. Uh, my name is Claire Hook, and I've been I've been a part of the National Art Honor Society since sophomore year, and this year I had the honor of being an officer. With the amazing students you heard from before me, I got to work on meaningful projects and contribute to our community through art. And AHS and the whole art program at this high school has greatly impacted who I am, and has even changed the trajectory of my future. When I came into the school as a freshman, I had very little interest in art, but I soon found the community here and I found my own passion for creating. NIHS meetings became something I looked forward to and some days my art classes were what motivated me to come to school. Art has completely changed the way I perceive the world and it has given me the ability to express the things I can't quite put into words. Art has enriched my life in a way that I never expected. I know that many of you NAHS members feel the same way. Everybody in this community has their own individual style and we're always inspiring each other. Through NAHS, we have done so much together and I hope that all of us continue to be creative and make a positive impact on the world. I'd like to thank our wonderful art teachers who have built up our skills and encouraged us to be creative. And special thanks to Ms. Brantley for running NAHS and making all of the society's projects possible. Lastly, a big congratulations to all of this year's NAHS inductees. Um, this brings a close to this year's National Art Honor Society induction ceremony. And thank you all for coming. Have a good night.